So last time where we left off was we were looking at this uh, program, which was which we were using to test uh, basically bit shifting. Well, we haven't finished that yet. But basically, how do you extract the digits from the number to be displayed, which is going to be our count? So you can send it to the seven segment display. So basically, we're making a software decoder. All right. Uh, so what is the bit shifting command? So here is our hex out. So anybody figured this out? So what do I do? So let's see. Uh, hex out for displaying number 23 is going to be what? So here is seven segment display decoder units digit, but let's say I want to display the tens digit as well. What do I do? Any ideas? Well, if you didn't figure it out yesterday, you should be able to figure it out like right now. So how do I do this? How do I display the tens digit? So obviously, I need to access the tens. I need to go into my array and access the corresponding seven segment codes, uh, seven segment code for my tens digit. Yes, right there. But how do I combine these? But yeah, you have to shift by eight bits. Which one should I shift? Like that, by eight, yes. And then what do I do with the units digit? Huh? Just add it. Yes, there's no or nothing. Okay, this is it. Is that clear? This is something, for example, you should know from your other classes. If you don't, that's not good, right? So you've seen this before, yes? This bit shifting. Yes or no? Okay, so, well, let's check it. Again, this is not. Uh, you, there are some nuances here. For example, you have to make sure hex out is initialized, okay? Because the C ANSI C standard is if variables are not initialized, they have an undefined value. So initialize, and this is just test of one uh, number, okay? You just got to understand that I'm not going to finish this up in the sense you finish up the hex code for or the seventh whatever the yeah the seven segment display code for all the other digits, active low, right? And then uh, you need to, well, extract the hundreds digits and the thousands digits and shift it appropriately. But let's just test this for now. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, I'm missing. Okay, seven segment. Thank you. All right, let's see what other errors I get. Let's save. Where am I? So I'm in the right directory. Uh, let's see, GCC output is called test count. Test count. Dot C. No, no, no. All right, so no error. Well, no messages. 9264. I don't know if that's correct. So let's just take a look. So it's D word. Yes. Actually, let's just do byte. We'll just have eight bits, right? Uh, no, no. Word, word. What am I saying? You have 16 bits. There you go. 9264. And then here it is in binary. So what are you displaying? Two, three. Yes. So this, the seventh, the eighth bit doesn't matter. Okay, it's zero by our assumption. So the middle segment, this should be three, right? Middle segment is on. Segment uh, five and four are off. Well, I don't know if you remember this. But let's just check. And what else we got? Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, 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 seven segment displays is 28. So there it is. There's that. All right. So this bit doesn't matter. 
middle segment is on, off, off, on, 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 that's three, yes? And for two, let's see, this doesn't matter. Yes? And then this is the middle segment, on, on, off, yes, on, on, off, on, on. That looks correct, right? Is that clear? All right. So again, finish up this software. You should finish. We are not using Eclipse. It's not necessary because this is purely software, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually switch to the hardware part. So we're going to inst in instantiate a PIO. I've already done that. I did it like today morning. Um, and then we're going to start looking at how to write an interrupt handler, OK? So now we're going to switch to Eclipse for the NIOS, because that's all very processor specific. All right, so and this is how you should debug, right? Like in the sense you should do it step by step. This takes, of course, time, but it's much more efficient, right? especially for a course like, uh, excuse me, 3921, where, well, not only 3921, right? 2902, 2920, whatever. You have to debug module by module, right? You really can't expect to put everything together and get it to work. Uh, number one. Number two, another thing you really should not do is, let's say you have some uh, reference design. Yes, I've noticed this actually only this week. Um, okay, let's give me a, let me give you a concrete example. So I've installed the university program. Yes, so here it is. I told you to install this, so hopefully I've done it. Uh, the QSYS university program modules. Let's say on Friday, I'm gonna cover the VGA controller, okay? So if you go in here, if you go to audio and video, under video, there is the VGA controller. We're basically going to write some characters to the screen. Now, what you should not do is this. So if you go in to the, under Altera, if you go into 13.1, the university program folder, he has some examples. Okay, he, he or she, they have some really nice examples. IP code demos, video demo. So what you, you should look at this, okay? What you should not do is you should not have a printout of this and blindly copy whatever is in here onto your code and try to modify it. It does, that is not the way you learn, right? Let me be very clear. I see a lot of students doing that. First of all, when you go to industry, you're not gonna have like a manual. Uh, even if you do have a manual, it won't have step-by-step -step instructions. Right? It'll just give you the big picture. That's what you should use reference designs and even my videos or any other videos, right? If you ever, if you ever attended any training seminars, like Altera training seminars, it doesn't happen. I just noticed this for the first time. You just can't blindly look at what I'm doing and expect to be able to copy it. Right? It doesn't work that way. So if you try to, okay, from now on, I'm gonna make this rule. If I see you doing that, I'm not gonna help you. Because right? it's not, it's stupid, right? You're not learning anything. The best way to test if you have learned something is you look at uh, any video, you go through any reference design, you read, choose book, whatever, right? close the book and then try to write the code on your own that is write it or type it on your own. I'm serious. That's the best way to check if you have learned anything or not. If you can't, if you get stuck even like this with syntax here, right? Like for example, all the syntax should be like down code, right? You should know how to define an array. For example, if you can't do this, that means you really don't know C programming, right? That's all I can say. You don't. So anyway, well, you still, you're only juniors. You still have like a couple of years, so fix it. Right? And this is something you have to do throughout your life. Okay, that's another thing. When you look at these reference designs, don't, there is no DE1, right? But then don't stop. It's like, oh, there's no DE1. Well, it doesn't matter in the sense, for example, let's go to character buffer, okay? So there is app software, yes? So if you look at this, this has absolutely nothing to do with your board, okay? This is basically, that's the point of writing software, right? it's at a high level. Where your board comes in is when you look at the underlying hardware. Now, another thing, that's point number one. Point number two is this code here actually doesn't use the hardware abstraction layer, okay? The hardware abstraction layer, HAL, in Eclipse, remember, it's a set of C functions and drivers which is built on top of your um, hardware, okay? So if you go in, uh, let's actually just do this since I'm on this topic and I have time today. So let's say you add this, um, where's your rule? 
character buffer character buffer for VGA display okay so we go to documentation and of course the video out device is onboard DAC that's in uh, that's incorrect well, no actually it is correct sorry onboard VGA DAC that's what you have all right so but then let's say you look at documentation it usually takes some time to oh it's pretty fast so if you click on this okay so once you install the university program Altera gives you really nice documentation um, and I don't want to okay let me just access it because I don't want to open up Acrobat it'll crash so it's under this folder so let me just go in there and open it so let's see I know where it is Altera IP university program so this is actually the IP folder actually has the HDL for implementing all of this okay you don't have to look at the HDL but it also has the documentation so we're going to audio and video you go into video right so here is all the um, different cores to connect to the Avalon bus but if you go under dock here this is what I was looking for and this is what that will open all right come on Acrobat ah here it is okay so now hit this preview in Windows it sucks all right so if you go into the video IP core descriptions character buffer okay blah 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 uh, okay here the character buffer is packaged with C language functions that are accessible through the hardware abstraction layer right now couple of points okay and this happens with any documentation this was updated in May 2013 but it turns out that Altera they changed some other things so these header files are like slightly different right I'll show you how to look them up so when you look at the files that are generated right you can uh, well we'll do this on Friday but the bottom line is what I was trying to say is that this so here is the hardware abstraction layer so it's got functions that wrap around your VGA core right so basically this C program doesn't actually use that right it uses direct memory access but then if you look at other code right so let's go I think it's in here both buffers aha there is app software how right so if you look at this so here see and this is what we're going to do on Friday but once you understand for example how to do like this IRQ thing this should only be like half a day work right so you instantiate hardware you put software to run on top of the hardware and this one you can't really test in like a native environment you really have to test it under Eclipse okay but that's the idea in the sense you look at reference design understand it uh, close this code and then you type your code on your own with documents like these as reference right so now the issue is if you've never seen like type devs and like declaring pointers that means your C language skills are not on par for this course right so you got to go back and practice this now so anyway this is how you look at other references and you only use them as reference right you really don't blindly copy from them that's the moral of the story so anyway i'm not going to add the vga right now let's see i don't think i added it no what i did add was i added a pio today morning right so where did i add that that's not under university program that's under general microcontroller that's under peripherals microcontroller peripherals pio okay just added one here it is called key one in so how many bits wide is this PIO how many bits wide no this one how many bits wide? it's just one right just one bit input yes is that clear Connor I'm I don't need to do bits for this so one bit input a uh, couple of things I have a synchronous capture on the rising edge and I have generate IRQ IRQ type should be edge what? Come on, go. there okay so is this clear this configuration very simple right so hit finish next thing you got to do is you got to make two things you got to make well three things clock should be connected okay reset or you'll get warnings should be connected actually you'll get errors if you don't connect this now it's memory mapped to your data master external conduit has been exported okay so if you go under HDL example there it is just an input port 
to which I'm going to connect my key one. Yes. And finally, whoops, system contents. Uh, here, number two. Okay. Just to generate IRQ. Yes. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what number this is. I'm just leave, going to leave it as it is. Uh, let me. Yeah, it's the priority level. Yeah. The priority matters. I mean, in the sense, uh, let's say you're having a MMU on there, memory management unit, and you have to resolve multiple interrupts. So if you have interrupts occurring at the same time, it's going to resolve it by priority. That's all it is. Okay. Let's see. Again, like I told you, don't use simulation and test bench unless your project involves that, because it takes a long time to synthesize. So let's just generate this. Okay. In the meantime, what I'm going to do? Oh man, I should not have. I should have basically copied the code first and should have modified the top level. Uh, but let's look at. Oh yeah, the other thing, as it's synthesizing, there's another thing you can look at here. Uh, let me look at it. So the, under the university program, right? Examples, IP core demos. It just has it just has video demo. I thought it has other stuff. Let's take a look. Edge detection, no. Let's see what's under D270. Video in, app software, no. Oh, let's take one more. I'm looking for examples of interrupts. That's what I'm looking at, looking for. That's a university program, examples, IP core demos. We just has video demos. Let's look at D215. Yeah, doesn't have it. Um, let's go back into our documentation. program uh, let's see input output ps2 okay ah here it is hardware abstraction layer uh, this is the source and let's look at this okay uh, uh, uh. so let's say you're interfacing to the ps2 keyboard okay what you would do is once you install the university program libraries if you go under here, uh, uh, generic I.O., I think. Yeah, PS2 controller. So let's say you're making an HS sketch or something. This is what you would use. Is that clear? So and there you have like a lot of reference designs here. I thought they had interrupt examples. Uh, let's see, Altera PS2 mouse. Uh, no, anyway, it's, it's fine. Like, uh, I'll try to figure out if they have yeah, I don't remember. All right. So since this generator is done, uh, let's just finish this up. So we need to update our component declaration because we added a port. Let's go up here. Actually, we've just added one more port, I think. So let me just check. And uh, component, NIOS demo. Yeah, we just, let's see, everything is standard. We just added this port, yes? So let me just connect that in. So let me delete all this. Hopefully I don't have any errors. We'll find out. Semicolon. Yeah, that's about it, okay? Do, all right, now what I gotta do is add this and map it to my key one. Do, oh, did I delete the wrong one? So I haven't connected my SD RAM. All right, let me connect that. Thought I did. Apparently I didn't. That's okay. Just delete all this. And then I'll connect the SD RAM as well. All right. Actually, I don't need any of these. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. 
delete 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 oh man this is what happens if your if our resolution is very very poor on our expensive projectors Okay, so let's add the export, and this goes to key one. Close that. We delete this. All right. Let's look. The bank address is connected for your SD RAM. Let's see. What's this address called? To, to DRAM address. Let me just copy all this. All right, so DRAM clock is taken care of. Let's look at the clock enable. So the DRAM clock enable goes here. DRAM underscore CKE. Uh, that's taken care of. Uh, let's see. The address goes here. Okay, that's taken care of. These ones have been taken care of. So to take care of the chip select, uh, let's take a look. Video. Let's close that. Let's go in here. So let's look at DRAM. Uh, VGA. No, don't need that. A little bit codec. As DRAM. All right. This is the one we want. So DRAM address has been taken care of. DRAM DQ is goes to 15 down to zero. I don't think I have DRAM DQ in there. Nope. So let's see. Out. DRAM DQ is in out standard logic vector 15 down to 0. Yes, so it should be in out. Yep, in out right there 15 down to 0. Yep, so let's take care of the data. DRAM DQ, and what else? So that's taken care of. Let's see, DQM is out. So what is that called? DRAM, LDQM, UDQM. So low data, low byte data mask and high byte, high byte data mask. Huh? UDQM. So let's see, DRAM, LDQM. Oops. What the heck is it called? LDQM, UDQM. QM, DRAM, UDQM is out, standard logic, yes, then uh, let's go down here, there's DQM, so it's of type out, standard logic vector, so what we got to do is we have to declare another signal called DRAM, DQM, yes, and then DRAM underscore LDQM is DRAM, DQM of zero DRAM. Why do I always have an extra R? DQM is DRAM DQM of one because this is the lower byte, yes. So obviously it should be bit zero. This is the upper byte. It should be bit one, right? DRAM DQM. All right. So it's taken care of. CASN, RASN, I think they're just called CASN and RASN, yep. Let's see. So, DRAM, CASN, and DRAM, RASN, these should be out. Yeah, out, out. Uh, write enable and chip select should also be out. Let's put it in here. DRAM write enable active low. DRAM chip select active low. All right. All right. DRAM CASN. DRAM RASN. 
DRAM write enable active lock. Okay, looks like I'm missing something. Where's my chip select? There it is, clock enable. So my chip select got deleted somehow. The order of uh, the ports, I mean, they should match, okay, in terms of the types. That's all is necessary. So I'm controller wire, which we call underscore chip select for to copy that. Underscore, let's see, it's after CKE. Just keep it in the order. And DRAM chip select and comma, right? So there it is. SDRAM is configured, uh, hopefully, and let's just do an analysis and synthesis, see if we get any errors. In the meantime, uh, as this, if hopefully we don't get any errors, as it's synthesizing, let's look at um, how to write interrupts, okay? For that, we can, let's go through choose book, since I can't find uh, the appropriate reference code. It's in there. It's in the example, I just don't know where. Oh, you could also do another thing. Right? You could go to the Altera University program documentation, or then you can look there. Right? So there are some errors, let's fix that. While this is booting up. Right. So what are the errors? Probably forgot a semicolon or something. Okay, let's double click on the first one. Oh yeah. There. So that's that. What about the next guy? Uh, this could be. Uh, this could be because of the error here. But let's just take a look. All right. So what I was going to say was, you could go to the university program links. And, yeah look at some examples here for intros, but let's just use choose book. Oh, let's see, books, courses. Let's see how this guy's doing. Yeah, looks like that was, yeah, looks like it's elaborating, which is good. All right, let it keep working. God, it's so slow. That's why. All right, so this is chapter 12. I think it's page 300. Let's just jump to it. Yep. Interrupts and ISR, blah, blah, blah. So basically, we're going to use the, obviously, the hardware abstraction layer. So the first thing we have to do is we have to register our intro, okay? That's step one. Step two is you have to enable it, okay? Step three is obviously you have to write the interrupt handler. Now there are some, uh, so there are some high level ideas here uh, before we start writing the interrupt. So what are we trying to do? When we press the key, right, we want the count to increment, yes? So give me some high level ideas on, so what should be inside the interrupt controller? Let me close this. This, you don't need all this. All right. So let's say you're writing an interrupt controller. Don't worry about the syntax. Interrupt. Uh, I don't know. Um, key ISR. Okay. Void. Doesn't return anything. Doesn't take any arguments. Huh? So you want your ISR to be as short as possible, yes? So what do you think should be in here? Just an increment, so it can be something like uh, count plus equals one, all right? So this assumes, assumption, count is initialized to zero uh, before uh, interrupt is enabled, yes? And of course, this count is what we will use here instead of hex out, yes? Uh, do, 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 do. You don't want to put this resolution, I mean, all this digits extraction in here, because this involves 
math operations, they start taking time. Right. The assumption is uh, before like all these operations finish before consecutive key presses by the user. Right. So these are all things you, these are all uh, functionalities that you have to maybe address in your design. Right. I'm not gonna address all this, just keep it simple so we have an idea of what's going on. So it's not successful, it's got 40 errors, let's see what's going on. Oh. Oh. SDRAM controller wire uh, uh, component. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is this component? It's wrong. Right. Let's try this again. Support map, there's no component. And yeah, so let's try this again. All right, as it's synthesizing, let's go back here, okay? So interrupt service routine. So here is the prototype, actually. So this is the prototype you have to use for any ISR, okay? And there are some restrictions you can talk about. So here is an interrupt-based flashing LED program. So let's look at... Hmm, hmm. the code, right, so here is the ISR, uh, whatever, so let's look at, tuck, 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 tuck. Uh, so here it is, okay, so basically what you have to do is you have to pass a, what is called as a context structure, which contains information about what peripheral is going to cost the ISR, okay, in our case it's a PIO peripheral, in the case of Chu, it's basically a timer because he's flashing LEDs, yes? So this is a high level picture you have to get from looking at this code. That's how you, that's how you avoid blindly copying this, okay? And then he's registering the ISR. Um, you have to ask yourself, he's not enabling it. Uh, well, let's take a look, right? Mm -mm -mm. He, Chu does have like performance, blah, blah, blah. He has the full complete program listing, which is what you should ultimately refer to, okay? So blah, blah, blah. So anyway, let's see if ours is like, nope, still errors. Let's take a look. Uh, why does it say it doesn't exist? Uh, 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 did I declare it right? Component NIOS demo that I generated it. Uh, let's take a look again. Uh, yeah, component NIOS demo and blah blah blah. Project oops, system contents. Did I change the name or something? Nope, looking good. SDRAM controller. Let's go back to generation settings. Display high NIOS to subsystem. Generate. Must have a syntax or somewhere else. NIOS demo, yeah, looking good. U0, U1, port map, reset. So it's saying none of these exist. It's not good unless my synthesis was off. Okay, so I don't have time to finish this in lecture. We have only nine more minutes. So what I'll do is later today, before I post the video, Okay, I'll write up the ISR. It's gonna be very simple. Basically, I'm gonna register the context, uh, enable the ISR, okay? And that's it. So and then the ISR itself is going to be just this, with the appropriate syntax. So take a look at it, and that's how you use interrupts. So if you want timer, well, you register for the uh, timer. And how often, if, let's say you use the timer, you write an ISR, for the timer, how often will it get called? So in other words, uh, it, it'll be, the ISR will be triggered whenever at the rate of the timer frequency or the period, okay? So we had one kilohertz, sorry? 
that's a good question i don't think uh in the nios i think the default is the time uh, the isr is executed whenever at the timer overflows which is basically equal to the period of the timer right let's see what he says uh, isr blah 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 if i remember right uh two timer modules interrupt of the timer core where is it no two bits yeah here so the interrupt is enabled okay this is how we when for example in the pio we checked use interrupt right that's what this is equivalent to but then here it is this bit is set to 1 when the counter reaches 0 right and the counter basically is reaches zero depending on how much what is the period you set for the timer okay unlike um i don't remember you should be able to like manually adjust the timer period from software okay but the so the default behavior is the timer keeps on running and once the timer period is met an interrupt is generated if you have enabled interrupts that's all it is all right so let's see okay so that's about it i'm going to stop the lecture stop this video so what i'll do is i won't record anything more onto this video but when i post this reference design online it'll have the interrupt along with it right so it'll have the complete code and yeah that's about it for interrupts All right. On Friday, what we will do is we'll um, because we're actually done with this custom I/O peripheral interface. So what we're doing is we're using PIOs to connect an external. In this case, just a simple switch. Right. You, this could be like multiple input outputs from a from your custom module, and instead of using one PIO, right, you can use multiple PIOs, or you can use one PIO with like uh 32 bit bus width is that clear and as a rule of thumb right okay, let me conclude it this way mm -hmm. let me just comment it here All right if you are using pios to interface to an external vhdl module uh the rule of thumb is to have a single clock cycle enable pulse okay in single clock cycle ready pulse uh to initiate data transfer between uh nios and your core is that clear so that makes sure that uh the initializations on both the nios side and your uh user core side it's done and then you send like let's say the user core can send a little single clock cycle enable pulse saying hey i'm ready also we can use um dp dual port rams to transfer data between nios and core okay so let's say you want to transfer like uh chunks of data what you could do is you could go into the mega wizard and instantiate a dual port ram dual port you know what dual port ram means well think what do you think dual port ram means no it doesn't have two memory spaces so it's got two interfaces right one on the host side and one on the well one for the host one for your core so it's dual port right so what it means dp ram dual port ram okay. so you can have well you can interface from either side so once the nios writes some data for example it will send a ready pulse to your core and the core can then read the data so that's how you interface to an external core using pios in the sense that you as the user make sure that the Uh, interface is synchronous okay with uh, let's say you're using avalon then if you adhere to the avalon protocol 
the Avalon bus, uh, whatever, arbiter, makes sure that the protocol is synchronous. So that involves, that's a little bit more complicated. But in this case, you have to do all the bookkeeping. So Anyway, that's about it for uh, this custom IO core interface. So on Friday, again, we'll do VGA. And next week, what we will do is we'll start, we'll look at how to interface the SD card core, which Terrasic provides, or even I think the university program also has one, right? Uh, so we can read data from the SD card. All right, so that's about it. Let me see what the heck is wrong with this.